enter raw. In the raw. In the raw. RK's Gainer Free Media, your friend, your brother, Haji, Dr. Roshan Khan. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, today is May, Saturday the 11th. Uh, two important uh, matters hanging in my head a bit. Several others, according to the media, the various newspapers. But one has to do with uh, ExxonMobil and Ramp Logistics saga. I find it strange that ExxonMobil um, can always be found here and almost every other country on the invoicing, making mistakes with under invoicing. ExxonMobil is not my friend. I always welcome, uh, I, I mean, ExxonMobil is my friend. They are not my enemy. I welcome ExxonMobil and their this, this thrust to the development and the opportunity to be provided to the people of this country. I, I applaud ExxonMobil. But I'm one who believes that ExxonMobil is an investor. And if they invest, we are not hiring them to invest. They are investing that whatever they invest, it is their responsibility, and we are not supposed to pay them back. Two, how is it ExxonMobil don't overpay anything? They don't overpay our country, our government. They don't overpay their contractors and, 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 and so on. But they under-invoice, they under-declare taxes, they under by billions of U.S. dollars. Same thing for RAP logistics. Always caught with their, with their hands and their face ducked in a pie of human filth. Dog and canine filth all mixed together. Rams Logistics. Is it possible that Rams Logistics is responsible with other companies like that who cares only about themselves and the gloating about their wealth, about the, their con ca causing the, the downfall and the destruction of Trinidad and Tobago? We found them bringing in shipments and ships coming in. They don't declare them export and import without any declaration and then they had to pay $20 million fine. They were, or have always been in all kinds of lewd and dishonest business and they have been caught in Guyana and then if the Trinidadian counterparts are trying to sabotage and blackmail us, if we don't give them the opportunity, they will deal with us accordingly. I repeat, uh, they will go to Suriname. And I said in, in writing and in, in, in the Archives Guide of Free Media is uh, go to Sarina, Trinidad, go. You're not coming here because you want to show respect to us. Now you're saying um, nice words of communication, a group of you. And when you were in your power in Trinidad, you were looking down upon us. Up to recently, one of our people wanted to export coconut waters. And you gave them such a difficult time. I think it's Rooster's Coconut Water, to be able to take the water into your country. But now you want to have articulation and communication and respect because in your heart, you still look down upon us. But you think we are fools, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm not talking to me. I had good experience. You know, I never went for business. I just went for social activities and I was always, and religious activities. And I was always treated with absolute dignity and absolute respect in Trinidad. But when it comes to business, they are the most vicious people in Trinidad and Tobago. The other thing catching the news is the Dar Daramlal matter in which this lady, who to me is not very attractive, uh, who has very serious bipolar and other mental issues, according to her own words, are trying to destroy a man right after he was elected at a high position by the governing party. I've gone to CNN. This, is, this shows the conspiracy. So for now, I will want to deal with the ramps logistics and the ExxonMobil matter. I am sad that ExxonMobil, despite all my appeals to them, and the fact that they are in Guyana, and I challenge them to do everything above board, because they are so wealthy, 
How much more money could they possibly want that they will drench a poor country, a country that needs opportunities for its people and its development, and under-invoice the billions of dollars, what should be just a few million dollars U.S.? Something is not right. And this is why, and I observe I was the first, to call on the government that everything that Rams Logistics and ExxonMobil declared in invoicing must be investigated from the time they arrived in Guyana. But two, not only Rams Logistics working with them, every other freight forwarder must be investigated and very serious criminal laws brought against them. I say ExxonMobil is not our enemy, but it seems to me like as if Rams Logistics is our enemy, the enemy of Guyana. They want to eat. How much can a person eat or a company eat? Rams Logistics seems to be a totally disgraceful and a shameful company, and maybe they have their hands on certain persons in Guyana, persons who may have some authority or some power. So let me um, just give you a quick outside view. The rain was on uh, quite a bit yesterday and last night. The breeze is not so heavy. It's light coming, as you can see from the shimmering of that palm leaf there and so on. But um, the, right, the rain keep coming and going a bit this morning. But we need our rains. The culturists, our farmers need the rains. So let us celebrate it. Let's not curse it. We need the rains, all of which come in Guyana in good measure. Remember what's going on? Over 100, what, 10, 20 people died in Brazil and other countries. Bridges collapsing, destruction taking place. Like, let us give thanks to God and thanks to our government for trying to put the drainage system in order. An appeal to Mr. Alfred Mentor, the mayor and his team at the mayor's office, city councillors, to try to put things in place in Georgetown. I don't think the canals and the gutters are good enough in Georgetown. Now back to the this matter with on the invoicing by ExxonMobil and they put what I put stated in the Facebook two patsies. Just two patsies. Just two patsies to take the bad name that they made a mistake, it was all an error. Billions of dollars an error, and I ask ExxonMobil, why couldn't be billions of dollars in an error to our part? Always to the favor of ExxonMobil, and also um, Rams Logistics falsely claimed that they were the suppliers. They bought it for, they bought the material for next to nothing, and sold it for billions and billions of U.S. dollars. Mere few million U.S. dollars, and technically sold it for billions of dollars. ExxonMobil knows better. They have to be a hand wash hand. Hand get clean by conspiracy, manipulation, and thievery. I'm asking and appealing to ExxonMobil. We need you. You need our country. Let our people have some good time in life. Because these materials in the earth are non-renewable. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these are the two people, I say, they are going as the Patsies, a manager of ExxonMobil Guyana Limited and a manager of uh, Rams Logistics Guyana Limited. And I call them basic Patsies. Um, and as I said earlier, we need to do a thorough audit of the highest caliber possible in this country. Representatives from ExxonMobil Guyana Limited and Rams Logistics Guyana Limited appeared before Senior Magistrate Lee Ron Daly on Friday in relation to the U.S. 12.12 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, from under 12 million U.S. dollars to 12.192 billion inflated invoice that was submitted to the Guyana Revenue Authority, are you telling me that ExxonMobil would have paid Rams Logistics that money? The procurement department of, Ram, of, of ExxonMobil don't know that is over invoicing? Absolutely. To my opinion, they can't say they don't know and they didn't know. And it's a mistake. They can't say that. It's unacceptable. 
Steve Gentry, a manager of uh, ExxonMobil, and uh, Mariska Jordan, the manager of Ramp Logistics, appeared before senior magistrate daily at the Georgetown Magistrate Courts, where they were read individual charges. Late April, it came to light that Ramp connected by Exxon, contracted by Exxon to import oil well equipment and allegedly submitted an inflated invoice. The discrepancy caught the attention of GRE, prompting an investigation. Thank you. Commissioner General Godfrey Statia and the staff of uh, the staff of uh, the Guyana Revenue Authority, you are heroes in this country to ensure that not only Guyanese are bled with taxes, but that the foreigners pay their taxes and they don't don't under invoice. And already we're giving them tax-free concessions that are strangulating our country and where our country has been looked down upon from other countries, and including big organizations like the IMF and the European Union and other countries. Gentry pleaded not guilty to the charges which stated that on 6th day of November 2023, at La 200-201 Camp Street, Georgetown Exxon caused to be made and subscribed a false declaration, declaration to the Revenue Authority to wit defendants Cost the value of declared an invoice number for a quantity of oil equipment and supplies to be valued of twelve billion one ninety two million one hundred and three thousand nine hundred and twenty three dollars and ninety one cents. Jordan also denied the charge that is Rams Logistics employee. It is alleged that on the same date and uh, Location, Rams made an untrue declaration to the Revenue New Authority to wit the defendant unruly declared a sum of twelve million twelve billion one hundred and ninety two million one hundred and three thousand nine and all in US dollars for a quantity of oil well equipment and supplies listed in an invoice. It is alleged that Rams submitted the invoice for oil well equipment valued at four million, listen to this ladies and gentlemen, four million four hundred and sixty seven thousand six hundred and sixty two dollar, but declared value to the customs at a staggering twelve billion one hundred and ninety two thousand one hundred and one hundred ninety two thousand one hundred and three whatever whatever as I read before dollars twelve billion from four million ladies and gentlemen. Imagine what they have gotten away with. ExxonMobil was represented by attorney, Matthew Victoria Law, led by senior counsel Edward Locke, while Rams consists of senior counsel Sophia Choti from Trinidad and Tobago. Well, these lawyers and these kind of teams are accustomed to this. We know what has happened to the economy of Trinidad and Tobago, and I'm, it's not unwise to say that companies like these could uh, are possibly responsible for the destruction of the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. Excuse me. Um, Senior Mag Magistrate Daly placed both Gentry and Jordan on self-bail and also granted permission for them to leave the jurisdiction when needed. The matter was adjourned to June 28, 2024. So they got a slap on their wrist, a slap on their wrist, and they are going to now go about meeting their people for all kinds of skullduggery, manipulation, trickery, mental uh, manipulation, and all kinds of things, I believe. The matter has been prosecuted by Deputy Commissioner General of the GRA, Attorney at Law Jason Moore, thank God, and they should have also had another lawyer from the private sector. The prosecutor informed the court that the investigation in the matter is still incomplete. It should be noted that if conviction for making a false dec declaration to the, de uh, the GRE, Exxon and Ramp face a mere 25,000 fine together with imprisonment for three years. And this goes to show $25,000 fine 
We need to have something for, for local people, ladies and gentlemen. And for these large companies, the law, Mr. Attorney General, needs to be tweaked urgently. The fines must be millions of dollars or three times the 12 billion. So it's supposed to be 12 and 12, 12 by 3. Billions in fines that they should face, to my opinion. This is the way we have to go. Because they know it's a mere that. And then the magistrate might use some kind of a discretion. I'm not going to make any comment there. Right? To waive, it is always the magistrate. It's not a, a compulsion, but a discretion on the magistrate to waive the imprisonment. So they know all of this. They study all these things. You heard a battery of lawyers from Trinidad and so on. They know what's happening. They know how weak we are. They, in Ramps Logistics and other people in the oil industries, including Exxon, they know that we are uneducated in the oil industry, so they will bleed our country and our future generations to death if possible. And the error resulted in an overstatement of the value of the items listed on the commercial invoice and consequently on the custom declaration submitted by your broker. In response to this, the Revenue Authority indicated that Exxon's claims explanation cannot be deemed as ac accepted by law. It cannot. From 4 million to 12 billion Exxon and also Rams Logistics, you bought the thing for next to nothing and you want to make a profit with your partners in crime to $12 billion? Are you not ashamed? I can just imagine what you guys have done to Trinidad and Tobago, and you have no shame, Ramp Ramp Logistics. In addition, evidence was obtained. In response to this, the Revenue Authority indicated that Exxon's claims explanation cannot be accepted in law, particularly since a statutory duty is imposed on Exxon to verify and ensure that all information declared to GRE by the broker is true and correct. But these kinds of things, some people have to be involved of highest caliber, ladies and gentlemen, of the highest caliber within these institutions, of the highest caliber. In addition, the evidence was obtained to prove that the untrue de declaration was caused to be made and subscribed to in the Revenue Authority by your company as such be guided accordingly that this act constitutes a breach of section so, 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 so. Act so, so, so. I'm not going to give you all of that. GRE told the company. Exxon was given an opportunity to show cause why the proceedings should not be instituted against them in accordance with the Customs Act. The company, in response to the Revenue Authority, made several claims that it was not the, the declarant and has not made any false declaration. <coughs> the company, in response to the Revenue Authority, made several claims that it was not the de declaration. Oh, anyhow, we know about all of that already. And I'm coming now to the last paragraph. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Share this to your family and friends. What, the, what these kinds of companies do to countries, what has been done to Mexico and Africa. Even in the United States, they got into trouble. Australia, they got into trouble. And now they are trying to get away from the clean-up responsibility of all the waste that they have left in the, in the ocean and the waterways and in the country. Moreover, the oil company also told GRE that under its contract, Rams has an obligation to review and verify all inbound shipping documents such as bills of leading, commercial invoices, packing lists, certificates of origin, etc., and was contractually obligated to review and verify all re relevant shipping information before preparing and submitting the declaration. So friends and families, ladies and gentlemen, yes, uh, we find two uh, institutions here, and they're trying to say it from $4 billion and few, 
to 12, 4 million to 12 billion, 192,000, etc., is a mistake. And the Makaritas Attorney General is a is $24,000 Guyana fine. Are we not ashamed a or, or bereft of shame, uh, Vice President, who watches over the oil industries? Don't you, should you not have your team of lawyers running through all of the books and laws as it pertains and move quickly to change the law? Mr. President, you are the president of the land if EP falls under you. You also have a responsibility here, sir. I'm all for my country. I'm all for my Guyana. I'm all for the betterment of Guyana and so on. But we can't allow these foreign companies to bleed us. Remember, oil is non-renewable. Your friend, your brother, me. Arjay, Dr. Ocean can in the raw. In the raw. Say thank you. Farewell, friend.